Good morning. You're a little more excited than the kids. That's a good sign. You know, it's, it's a wonderful time of the church's year when we start to hit some of these readings where the stories are unfolding. And for the last couple of weeks in particular, we've had some very good stories that remind us of the awesomeness of God. The awesomeness of God, who, if you remember a few weeks ago, wants to have an intimacy with us like that of family members. Those who do the will of my father are brother and sister to me. Jesus wants that intimacy with us. That's such an awesome thought when you just process it even for a moment. And then, of course, you had Jesus talking about the beauty of nature, the tree, and how the, the mustard tree can become so beautiful and the birds can land in it. A reminder to us of how God manifests himself to us again and again. Often I'm so amazed at how many people could look around at what they see and not experience the divine, the awesomeness of God in our midst. Last week with St. John the Baptist, the call and God reminding us that there is a better path, there is a better way, him constantly reaching out to us again and again down through history. And then we get to this week. You know, I was reminded the other day of a conversation that I had with someone a few months back. This was one of those people that when I was speaking to him, you know how like when you start a conversation with someone sometimes, it's like a charismatic way about them, and you're kind of pulled in, you're curious, and you want to talk with this person. And he had this way, he was now in his upper years, he had, been, uh, he had raised a nice family, eight children he had raised. And he and his wife, they just seemed so calm and so relaxed. And, and we were talking. And, and so in the course of the conversation, I said to him, I said, how can you be like that? And he said, what do you mean? I said, you seem so easygoing, so calm. Someone who raised eight kids, I would think you'd be like wired. And, and he said, well, let me tell you something. It was years ago when my children were young that my wife and I decided, we were praying together and we had come to a realization how much God had blessed us and how little we had been giving to God. How richly we had been blessed by God and how much we kept holding back out of fear and trembling, out of those moments where we weren't quite sure. And so we prayed about it, he said, and we came to a decision that day that we were going to give back to God more generously that we were going to just give to him as he gives to us, without reservation, without thought. Now, now I'm pulled into the conversation because now I really want to know. I'm like, how did it turn out? <laughs> First thought that always comes to our mind. He said, from that moment on, we had committed to giving 10% of our income to God. I was like, wow, that, that's pretty risky. He said, no, it isn't. Drew me back. He said, no, it isn't really. If you truly believe in God and you trust God, he says, don't be cheap with God. And he started from that day forward to give back to God from the many blessings. And I have to admit, it made me really think, I'm very generous in how I give back to God. There's always room for more. You know, that's what St. Paul is talking about in the second reading. Those who had didn't have more. Those who did not have much didn't have less. And yet, so often, out of our own fears, out of our own anxieties, we cheat God. We're not very generous. God is awesome. God is, God is so wonderful. I mean, can you think of anything that God has done in your life where you can say he didn't give 110% to you? He wants an intimacy with us. And he's calling us again and again to change our lives, to give back to him from the very depth of our being. And yet, so often, because of fear, we don't trust God. But yet, God is so awesome. He's so in our lives, isn't he? Everywhere we turn, we, we, he's there for us. He's helping us. He's gifting us. And yet, so often, even in the face of all of that, we just hold back a little bit. But in the awesomeness of God, I can't do that anymore. And after listening to this gentleman, I can't do that anymore. Today's gospel is one of those gospel what you find in Mark kind of uniquely. One of these things where there's an interlude between the story that he's telling 
And here we have these two great moments of healing. These two very powerful moments. One where Jesus was just touched and healing power went out of him. And the woman, after suffering for so many years, was alleviated from her physical suffering. I always get a kick out of it, that little interlude that's in there. Who touched me? Can anybody, who touched me? You're Jesus. And looking around, the woman came to him. And he didn't scold her. He didn't get upset with her. Your faith is greater, he said. Your faith is what saves you. Then there's the little girl. This girl had died. And there was this big, sad commotion. And there's Jesus walking in and saying those key words, I say to you, arise. I love those words. Now, Jesus is talking about healing. Healing is very clear throughout the scriptures. But let's face it, for the most part, physical healings are not what it's about. The awesomeness of God says, no, it's about spiritual healing. It's about our spirits being lifted up. It's about Jesus saying to you and to me, even though you fell again in sin, I say to you, arise. Climb up out of that sin. Go forth and sin no more. How often he gives us that chance again and again and again. How often he's there to feed us with his own body and blood to strengthen us to fight against sin to give us that power to do good and not evil, to give us the strength to do the will of God so we can be brother and sister to him. How often he invites us into the confessional and says to us once again when the priest prays over us, arise, it's done, you're forgiven. That's the awesomeness of God. That in a nutshell is what God is all about. That is just in a very simplistic way, the awesomeness of God playing out in our lives. He wants us to be in intimate union with him. He wants us to be part of his family. He wants us to be with him for all eternity. And again and again, no matter how many times I stumble, there he is lifting me up again. No matter how many times I've made a mistake, there he is giving me that correction again. And at the end of it, he always says, arise. Come forward. Don't be dead in sin. Be alive in the Spirit. My brothers and sisters, if God is truly an awesome God, God being the great God that we love so much, God being that one who calls us to arise, we only need to respond in kind and stop holding back so often. Stop holding back from what he's given to us. Stop holding back with our time, our talent, our treasure. And just start giving generously. Start opening up our hearts to him who is so awesome. It's all around us. And as long as his miracles are around us, as long as his generosity is around us, we need to be standing up and saying, yes, Lord. We need to be standing up and saying, I believe, Lord, and I will live my life as a believer. See, the great thing is, no one of us are left alone. We're brothers and sisters to each other. If we're brothers and sisters to Christ, we're brothers and sisters to each other. And so all those burdens that we sometimes carry, all of that pain that we sometimes carry, is lifted up by a community. All of our prayer together for those who are downtrodden, all of our coming together again and again to lift the others up through the intercession of our own community, the awesomeness of God is manifested for us that great gift, that desire he has to bring to you and to me healing. That's how awesome he is. He wants us to be whole. You know, a little while ago, we came up with a little phrase that we believe describes what is going on here at Blessed Sacrament. Blessed Sacrament is the place where broken bread makes broken people whole. The bread that we break here in the Eucharist, the grace that we receive, has that express purpose of making us whole, of taking that brokenness in our lives and making it whole again, of taking the voids that we feel in our lives, the hurts that we've experienced, and making them whole again, of making our lives complete again, 
so that we can experience the joy even in the midst of hard times. That we can experience joy even sometimes when we grieve. That we can experience joy because God is that awesome and he will lift us up. As brothers and sisters, we lift each other up. As we bring this series to a close, I ask you to consider how much you've been blessed by God. I ask you to consider this week how awesome God is for you. How awesome he has been again and again, giving himself to you. I ask you to look into your own heart and ask, have I been generous back to him? Have I really truly opened my heart and given myself to him? Because with the awesomeness of God on our side, with God around us at all times, with God bringing us together again and again, there is no pain, there is no suffering, there really is no trial or tribulation that can't be lightened and changed by his grace. And so today, especially my dear brothers and sisters, with the awesomeness of God before you, go forth and be his emissaries in the world. Go forth and live as a missionary disciple. Go forth, my dear brothers and sisters, knowing that the awesome God goes with you, blesses you, and says to you, arise. Go out and say to your brothers and sisters, arise and come to meet Christ. God love you.